Okay, in this video, we're going to graph this. And I use this word uh, specifically, this, because I want to ask you, what is this? What are we dealing with, okay? So uh, this happens to be a polynomial. And if you said polynomial, I must say outstanding. That's very good. That's exactly what we're uh, dealing with. We're gonna be graphing a polynomial in this problem. So this is a polynomial, it happens to be factored Okay, and it's a polynomial equation. So we, it's a good idea that we know a lot about polynomials in order to graph this. So it's actually, uh, this problem is actually not that difficult. Now we don't need a graphing calculator, although you should know how to use uh, a graphing calculator. That's important, but that's a separate dis uh, discussion altogether. But uh, the one thing I need to emphasize is that polynomials is a huge topic in algebra. So those of you that are in algebra one, uh, to definitely like um, algebra two, pre-calculus or college algebra or intermediate algebra, all these courses, you're gonna have to be able to handle a problem like this um, because you're gonna be um, expected to graph uh, various functions of which polynomials there uh, are several types like parabolas and et cetera. But again, uh, we're gonna focus on this guy right here and some uh, main concepts about graphing polynomials that you definitely need to know. All right, so we're going to get into all this in just one second, but uh, first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over uh, several years I've constructed what I like to believe is uh, one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following uh, the link in the description of this video, but uh, basically I have courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, I'm going to be launching a pre-calculus here shortly, uh, but I do a lot in the area of test uh, preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, CLEP exam, Accuplace, or Alex, maybe a teacher certification exam, uh, maybe a, a nursing school entrance exam, all those exams have a ton of math on them. So if you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well in the exams. So I can definitely help you out. Just go to my website. Uh, and then check out my full course catalog. I should have your exam uh, there, a test prep course. Now, if I do not, okay, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I've been working with homeschoolers for 15 plus years. Uh, I have a great homeschool learning uh, system, so I can definitely help you out. And then obviously I help those of you that are struggling in your current math course. Now, if you are serious about improving in math, and I assume that you are if you're watching this video, then you need to know this, okay? And this is after decades of teaching math. Uh, those students, um, you know, this is what I've learned, okay? Those students who take great math notes almost always do very, very well. They're always the top students, and the reverse is true. Those students who were like me way back in the 1980s where I was like talking to my friends, uh, not taking notes. I did write stuff on a piece of paper though because when my teacher looked over at me, I would just kind of just doodle or whatnot, kind of pretending that I was taking notes. But uh, listen, you know, I, I didn't get serious about uh, becoming a student until I became, uh, until after I went in the Marine Corps and then I went off to college. So you got to be serious about being a student. You can't say, I'm not doing well in math, but then you're not doing the work, you know, then that's not fair. You can't blame it all on your teacher. I know a lot of you out there, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I'm fighting these allergies, so my voice might be cracking up a little bit, but I know a lot of you out there are, you know, may, you may not like your teacher, you know, let's just be honest about it. Uh, maybe, you know, you're saying, well, I don't get their teaching style, but listen, here's the deal, okay? Uh, you could still learn from any teacher. You're just gonna have to work harder and smarter, like harder and smarter, right? And being smart is uh, taking math notes. So you're gonna have to go and do whatever you gotta do to get the information uh, about the topic that's being taught, okay? In the mathematics, there is a lot of things to write down in your notes. And note-taking is all about remaining focused. Okay, focus is the key to success. Uh, and, uh, and when you're learning something, if you're not focused, then you're not learning. That's the bottom line. All right, so work on your math notes. That's gonna definitely help you out. Now, in the meantime, um, as you're improving, I actually offer detailed uh, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get back to our problem. If you think you know how to do this, go ahead and pause the video and, and uh, whip up a quick sketch. But let's get into it. Matter of fact, in the um, title of this video, I believe 
I said to find the both uh, the X and Y intercepts of which we're going to do here uh, right now, okay? All right, so first, we're dealing with a polynomial function. Uh, we need to know a few things about polynomials. Well, uh, one characteristics, uh, characteristic about polynomial graphs is that they're smooth and continuous, okay? And they kind of turn. They don't do this business like, like that. They don't do this. They, they have nice curves to them like so, okay? Now, how many turns they have, okay, well, that's a completely different story, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But um, uh, the first thing we need to do is start, uh, we got to get some points uh, on this particular polynomial uh, on our graph. Now, one approach you could use, it's not a recommend, uh, recommended approach, but one thing you could do, and you should know how to do, is create a table of values, okay? So you could create a table here and plug in a bunch of, just make up a bunch of X uh, points, you know, that are on the X axis, just, you know, random points, plug them into a table and then plug them in and get your respective Y values. And these would be coordinates. And then you could kind of like play, connect the dots. You know, you could be like, oh, okay, here's the graph. You need to know how to do that because there are functions where, uh, you know, there is no other option other than to create a table of values. So uh, you need to understand how to work with tables of values. And it's a good idea to kind of um, make your graph more accurate. Um, however, uh, we can kind of get a general sketch of uh, this polynomial by just using uh, big picture concepts about the uh, polynomials. So the first thing is I want to find uh, the x-intercepts. So where does this polynomial, let's say it's something like that, where does it cross the x-axis? That's called the x-intercepts. And if you look here, the x-intercepts occur when y is equal to zero. So when we let y equal to zero, that is our location of uh, our x-intercepts. Now, one thing you need to know about x-intercepts and polynomials is that these locations here are actually a real number, okay, real number solutions. We call them zeros or roots, okay? These are terms that hopefully you're familiar with. So let's go ahead and uh, try to locate some x-intercepts in this particular problem. So again, how do I do that? Well, I need to let y equal to zero. And most of you out there are like, oh, okay, we just let this equal to zero. And then we go ahead and solve this respective equation right there. So hopefully uh, most of you are like, oh, this is pretty easy because I have factors. Okay, I'm going to set each of these factors equal to zero. So x is equal to zero x plus 4 is equal to 0, and x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, if you don't know what I'm doing here, this is called uh, the zero product property, and you need to know how to solve polynomial equations. I have tons of videos on this in my Algebra and Algebra 2 playlist on my channel. Of course, I teach this thoroughly in my Algebra 2 uh, and College Algebra courses in my Math Help program. Okay, but uh, bottom line is that uh, our x-intercepts are going to be located at x equals 0, uh, negative 4, and positive 4. These are our real number solutions. And if you look at this right here, if I multiply all this together, okay, these factors right here, I'm going to get, well, right here, hopefully you can see that this is the same thing as um, x squared minus 16. Okay, that's the difference of two squares. But you can kind of do the FOIL method and multiply these together. Then we'll multiply by that x. I'm going to get x cubed minus 16x. So that's what we'll want. This is another form of this equ uh, equation right here. <clears throat> now, excuse me. So what am I dealing with here? Well, I'm dealing with a third-degree polynomial. Okay, a, a third-degree polynomial, meaning that there's three solutions, real or imaginary. And I just found them right there. 0, negative 4, and 4. So these are the points right here, negative 4, uh, 0, and 4. These are the x-intercepts. So now I know that this polynomial is going to um, cross through these points. And remember, I have to have smooth turns. So the only way a polynomial uh, graph can go through this is either it's got to do this, right? That's one approach, or it could go like this. OK, so we don't know um, exactly, you know, which uh, way that's going to occur.
but I will get into that in a second. So, uh, so we have our three x-intercepts, and now we want to get our y-intercepts. Now, when does our y-intercepts occur? Well, if our x-intercepts occur when y is equal to 0, well, when we let x equals to 0, okay, when we let x equals 0, we'll get our y-intercepts. So let's take a look at this equation. I kind of wrote it out a little bit clearer over here. So uh, when we let x equals to 0, whatever our y value is going to be, okay, when x is equal to 0 is our y-intercept. But if I plug in a 0 here and a 0 here, I can see that y is equal to 0. That's my y-intercept. That's the location the polynomial crosses through the y-axis, like right here, like that location. But that's not uh, the case in this problem. So both the x and y-intercept um, are uh, at the same location, i.e. the origin. So now I just need to figure out um, uh, which way is this going to go? Is my graph going to go like this? Okay. Or is it going to go the other way? Okay. Now, how can I answer this question? Well, I could construct a table of value and I could get some points here uh, that could kind of show me what's going on. But there's some other things that you need to know about graphing a polynomial that are important. Okay. Now let's go back over here. Let's take a look at this form y equals uh, x cubed minus 16x. Okay, the first thing is this 3. That's the degree of the polynomial. Okay, that's the highest power of the polynomial. And uh, there's a little, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a, uh, uh, a property that states that the polynomial will have uh, it, the turns of the graph will be no more than, than the, the degree Okay, minus 1. So in this case, it will be 3 minus 1 or 2. That's the number of maximum turns uh, the graph will uh, have. So in other words, here's a turn and here, this is a turn, and that's a turn. So this polynomial will, will turn no more than 2. Okay, now that's the max number. It doesn't mean that it's always going to turn exactly that number of times. So if you had a fifth degree, for example, this was a uh, x to the uh, 5, so it would have no more than four turns. But that doesn't mean it's going to go one, two, three, four. Not necessarily, okay? That's the maximum number of turns, though. So that's the first thing you need to know. Is say, okay, the maximum number of turns in this particular problem is going to be two. Now, another thing you need to know that's going to answer our other question about the behavior of this graph is the leading coefficient. So that's the number in front of this. Uh, let's write it over here. Y equals x cubed minus 16x. This right here, the value is what? That's a positive 1. So if the leading coefficient is positive, okay, the graph is going to have uh, an end behavior going this way from left to right. Okay. So let's take a look at how that's going to look. It's going to go like this. It's going to start in this direction. So that means Knowing this, I'm going to have two turns. It's going to start in this direction. Let's just go ahead and start graphing this thing. Okay, so it's going to start this way. It's got to go through this point. Then it's going to make a turn. It's got to come through this point. That's our y-intercept. And then it's got to do another turn like so and come through this point. So here is our two turns. Okay, this is our starting behavior over here. And this is basically it. Now, to make this in scale... Um, again, I can make a little XY table and uh, plug in some more uh, precise points. But um, you know, this is basically uh, uh, the gist of getting a decent sketch of a polynomial. Okay, there's other things we could do to make it <clears throat> excuse me, uh, more precise. But if you know this much, then you, you should be able to you know, construct pretty decent uh, graphs of any polynomial function. Of course, this was pretty easy for us because to get our um, x-intercepts, uh, this was all factored to be able to solve. But, you know, if the problem was something like this, let me kind of just draw something else. Let's say uh, 3x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 9x plus 1. Well, this is pretty difficult because... If I set this equal to zero, then I'm going to have to solve this, okay? Uh, and that's a pretty sophisticated problem. Uh, but again, nothing that you should not be able to handle or could be able to handle 
in Algebra 2. There's a lot of additional advanced theorems and concepts, but same things apply. The, the only uh, deal that's different here is that this is much, much more challenging to solve than what we had over here, okay? Um, again, what could help us out is using a nice XY table. So you gotta use all the tools in your tool bag, uh, Algebra Toolkit, uh, to get, uh, construct a graph, right? Uh, in other words, don't be shy, you know, and be like, oh, I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use this, do whatever, okay? But uh, don't just revert to your graphing calculator and uh, plug this in and, and write it down. That's not gonna, uh, you know, cut it on your test when you're not allowed to use a calculator. But again, you still need to know how to use a calculator. I use a uh, TI-84, uh, plus silver edition, which is an awesome calculator. By the way, if you are looking for a calculator, I would recommend a TI-84. Uh, those are awesome. Or even a TI-83. I have uh, TI-83s back, oh man, they're probably 15, 20 years old. Excellent ca excellent calculator. Uh, this is even, uh, you know, this is like the souped up version. But there's other calculators. Casio, I think, has some out there. But if you're at this level of mathematics, pre-calculus, college algebra, you're going to need one of these calculators. And by the way, do the smart thing. Always know where your calculator is out. Uh, don't, you know, safeguard it because, well, you know, when I was teaching, uh, unfortunately, people would take other people's calculators. So, you know, protect this stuff because these calculators are expensive. They're like a hundred, uh, well over a hundred dollars. Uh, maybe you can get yourself a used TI-83 for under that. And by the way, too, if you could get yourself a used calculator for 30 bucks or something like a TI 83, it's definitely worth it. If you don't have the money to spend something uh, at a higher level, but some courses actually require you to have a specific calculator, um, especially like uh, statistics courses and whatnot. So, man, do your research if you don't have one, uh, but you should get one. Okay. So, anyways, a little uh, digression there on calculators. But uh, the bottom line is this. You need to know how to use your graphing calculator just to kind of verify these graphs. Okay, it could be a, a great learning tool. All right, so if this video helped you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I think I have over a thousand videos for sure. Um, I'm posting new material all the time. I have stuff from basic to advanced math on my uh, channel in my various playlists. But uh, my best math help uh, will be found in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.